Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today I am once again working on the Viking Link cosplay and pretty much capping this thing off. This will be the last full build. Um, I will have another build that's like tidying up the loose ends, like strapping and things like that, kind of like what I did for the Knights Templar build. This build I've been putting off for a bit just because I was trying to figure out how to go about it. Um, I probably should have just put the battery pack in the shield and be done with it, but I wanted to do something a little different and unique. So I put one of these Enlighten kits in my shield, which makes some pretty awesome, easy to edit lighting effects. Um, it's this little tiny chip right here attached to a battery pack and I need to house this in something and I thought what better thing to put this in than the handle of a dagger. So that's what we're going to do today. Today we are going to make a Viking dagger to fit a battery pack in. Let's get to building. I've had this idea for a while now. It probably would have been easier to just put the battery pack on the shield, but I cannot make things easy. So I thought it'd be cool to kind of hide it in a different way. I start by looking at a few references and sketching out the base. I had to use a one and a half inch PVC pipe to fit the battery. I cut it about six or seven inches long. The scramasex, I'm, I'm probably gonna mispronounce this word the entire video, sorry, were about four inches to 27 inches long that's 10 centimeters to 70 for my metric friends i'm aiming somewhere in between that at about 17. With the newly made pattern for the base, I am ready to trace the pattern twice onto some 6mm EVA foam, specifically what the foam from Cosplay Apprentice because it is super dense. I've used it with both the blade and the axe on my previous builds. My design is based off a broken back seeks, or however you say that word also, I apologize for my southern tongue, which to me the blade kind of looks like a Japanese short blade in a way because of the end. I cut two, put a line towards the middle for my sharpening edge. Once traced, I cut it out and glue it together with contact cement. To get my sharpened edge, I start with a sanding drum on my rotary tool and etch in a bevel to my line. Once done on both sides, I switch to a stone bit and smooth over the sanding marks. I get a lot of people asking for swords and knife builds and they're fairly simple things to construct. You can either hand draw the shape or just print out an image to scale with your hand. The basic concept of what you see me doing here would apply to those as well. My tang on this blade has to be short so it remains remains hollow in the handle. Thank you. 
I need to make a plug here to fit the gap in my PVC with the blade. Easiest way to do this, or at least I've thought, was to push the PVC onto the foam. Here I'm using 10 millimeter and cut it close to the outside line of the indention. You want to cut it a little too big so that when you go to shove it in the PVC it's nice and snug. Once cut, I mark my blade width, cut out that chunk, then glue the outside semicircles to the blade. To secure them together, I glue a thin sheet of 10 millimeter foam on the bottom. To tie in a little Zelda into the blade, I'm going to add some flair to it, drawing inspiration from the Guardian blade from Breath of the Wild. I make a modified version of the backspine of the blade to act as an overlay on my blade. When I get it sketched out, I follow the same steps as the blade base. I wanted to do some leather wrap or something similar to what the other weapons have on them, but because I had to use such a thick piece of PVC for the electronics to fit inside, it would be too big. Instead, I decided to carve into the PVC. I made recess panels in like an elongated oval shape, carved it with a diamond bit like when I did the scrim showing on my drinking horn and my war horn. You should definitely go check those out once you get done watching these if you haven't already. Once that was all carved in, I did a simple not work motif on the inside space. While yes, there were ornate grandma sacks inlaid with gold and other precious metals, I'm gonna make an assumption that most of them were pretty basic. Link is known to carry along some pretty decorative weapons, so I figured why not put some fake stones on the backside of the handle. I just carved out a little spot for them to sit flat on the rounded PVC and moved on to the next step.
My pommel on my sword and axe were very similar, but on this one, I needed to make it a little simpler with a flat cap to go over the bottom. That way I still have room for the LEDs and the cord to come out of. I cut out a circle large enough, then cut out a circle inside of that to make a band that'll fit snug on the outside of the handle. Then another layer on the top of it closes off the opening. And of course, in much props fashion, I can't leave a simple shape like this done, so I'm I'm going to add a little bit of flare, maybe even using a laser cutter. I drew this Elder Futhark band for the shield in a previous build and I'm gonna repurpose it here as a decoration for my pommel. It is basically the eldest of the runic alphabet for the Vikings but put into a circle. I shrunk it down to an inch and a half and let my Glowforge make quick work of it. The center will have a port that I have to cut out for the LED connection to poke through. It takes the laser cutter a little over four minutes to perfectly burn in in these tiny little details. Foam gets two coats of Plasti Dip and the pipe gets black spray paint. Base coated the handle brown and the blade a light mist of silver spray paint. For a nice accent, I thought it would look cool to do some more gold leafing. While yes, you need to lay down gilding adhesive, this stuff will cling to everything, including your finger. So I mask off parts that I don't want to have to scrape off gilding glitter later. I have done this process in several other builds on this cosplay and really like the look of gilded parts. You could spray paint it gold, but it doesn't look the same. I slather on adhesive, stick the sheets down, knock off the excess with a chip brush, and seal it with gilding varnish before I remove the tape.
I am going to hand paint on the Guardian blade detail with some blue base, then hit it with the iridescent paint. The color change stuff is very see-through and would take umpteen jillion tons of layers to get it to be solid, so I'm going to lay down this opaque layer first, then hit it with the iridescent. I also went ahead and painted the handle and the pommel recesses with the same color. Last step is to just glue in the jewels on the handle back with super glue. I also made a plug for the outlet hole for when it's not plugged up to the shield, it'll just look like a basic bedazzled pummel. And we are finished. Here is the end result. Overall, I think it turned out pretty cool. Definitely a lot different than the other two weapons that I made for the cosplay, but I definitely think that it kind of matches with the later things that I built, the war horn and also the drinking horn. Kind of had this gold gilded motif and bringing in that thing right there to incorporate it back into Zelda just a little bit. Um, so yeah, maybe you will try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to pull something from a video game, mix it with something from history and make something completely new yet kind of cool. Maybe you'll get some and inevitably they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these, tell them much props. Um, I guess it's going to be a little bit of a stabby stab, so prepare yourself. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to see more builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.